So there are a ton of AI tools that are out there specifically that can help you use your lasers, but it kind of feels like a gold rush and it also feels like there are a lot of people trying to scam you. So in this video, I wanna show you the AI tools that I have used. And specifically, we're gonna talk about it in three different categories. One is image generation. Two is going to be image manipulation. And third, how you can use it as support when you run into issues with your lasers. All right, let's jump into it. So first, let's talk about image generation. And yes, there are a ton of different ways that you can use AI to create images. And one of my favorites is actually Midjourney. Now this is a paid service. Um, so I'm logged in, I'm on the explore page right now and see like this is AI generated and it's pretty wild what you can do. But we're specifically talking about lasers. And if I go into um, what I have created, so if I go over to create, um, you can see I have kind of been working with a bunch of different things. Uh, so in the latest video, I did some coin stuff. So you can see me kind of working on my coins. Um, but if you've never made anything like this before, you're always gonna have this bar at the top and you basically just type in what you wanna make. So I'm gonna say a lion head vector line art, highly detailed. Uh, there's some like settings and stuff. We're not gonna adjust that. I'm just gonna hit enter. And um, then it's going to go ahead and start creating. I'm gonna pop back over here. It's gonna make four at a time, um, which is really handy. So, and you can see right here, we have four different ones, um, which really great about uh, Mid Journey is just their UI and their interface. And so let's say you like this design. I uh, see so you like the really strong lines. We can basically use this and then we can vary this. So like, let's give me, more variations, uh, let's make it strong. And once I do that, it's gonna go ahead and run four more variations of that design. But you can see, you can basically have a lot going really quick. So let's say I wanna do it subtle. Uh, so that's gonna start four more versions. Uh, now let's say I want to just go ahead and rerun it. Uh, that's also gonna give me four more versions. So here you can see we are getting lots and lots of iterations really, really quick. Um, all within Midjourney. Uh, and this is the primary reason that I like to use it. Now, what might be hard if you've never done anything like this before is like figuring out like what to type. So like, give me a laser lion head. And so yeah, so this might've been kind of what we were going for, uh, but we definitely have some different versions uh, right here. So one hack I find useful, regardless of what you're using to create your images, um, is actually using AI to help you create the prompt or create what you're going to put in. So I'm just using ChatGPT. This is 4.0 that I'm using to do this. I'm gonna say, give me a Midjourney 6 prompt as a template. And then I can also, and this is really helpful as well. Uh, so I found this like example of something that I wanna use. I can just drag that in and I'm gonna say, use the image as a reference for what I want. Should be good to go. Cool. So then it gave me this prompt and I could just like copy and paste and then change the subject. And it's actually given me some of these things here at the very end, like aspect ratio, what version of mid journey it's using that I could add to the prompt directly. Uh, but you don't really need to worry about that unless you really want to get in super deep. I'm just going to copy, paste this in, and then I'm going to change this to a uh, dragon attacking a castle. Cool. And so now I have these vector artworks. Uh, this is like super detailed line art, uh, a bunch of different versions of dragons attacking castles. And so, uh, yeah, really cool. And then I could go and modify it further, uh, which we will talk about in our next step. But before we get into our next step, a few other ones that you could also use. Um, so since we are already in ChatGPT and then ChatGPT directly will just generate an image for you. I find Midjourney, typically for me, I like how Midjourney works, especially with their interface. This still is more like a chat interface, which is Midjourney being definitely image centric. And so you can kind of go from there. You can also get lots of really good inspiration from folks. Um, so you can see we got an image right here uh, inside of ChatGPT. But then another one I haven't used as much, uh, but I do want to dive into more. This is Git Image. This is gitimage.ai. And specifically, they use Flux for like the backend models for AI generation, and they can be pretty incredible. And so this one, um, I'm going to do something kind of similar. You can see I did some tests, but I'm just going to do give me a dragon castle. Uh, and instead of before, where we went to chat GPT to generate the prompt. And then I'm going to hit this AI improve right here. And then you can see it has improved this but I'm on a free account, so you can actually uh, generate several of these. Uh, it might be unlimited using um, this model. Uh, and then I can see it's giving me an image, and this is actually not what I was wanting. Then I'm actually gonna add black and white and line art to this, and we'll see if it gives me something 
uh, that isn't full color uh, like this to see how it goes. But again, with all of these, um, it probably take you a little bit of time to kind of get it dialed in into a style that you want, uh, but you definitely can use AI to help you along the way with the process. Now, another category in this is if we're doing bass relief coins or coins that are actually 3D or two and a half D, so they are layered, meaning there is a depth map that we can use that helps generate all of these images. And I just put out a video going through this entire process step by step if you wanna follow along. But um, the tool that I use to do that is called Sculpt OK. Again, this is a paid tool, uh, but I do find it works really, really well when you need to generate a depth map. And you can see right here a quick example I did of Harrison Ford, uh, where I've got four different results from Sculpt OK that kind of vary by detail. And so uh, usually I find this is about the best one, uh, kind of your third one. I'm gonna hit 3D preview, uh, which will open up a 3D preview and so you can kind of see what you are working with. And it can definitely work better on certain type of images. We're getting some stuff going on weird with the hair. So I probably would need uh, to cut this image out from the background first, so I wouldn't confuse it. But we are getting a depth map image that then we could take to our software and send it to the laser. And now one other thing I find helpful is actually seeing some of the other prompts people use in order to generate the artwork that they want. Uh, and so a marketplace for that is prompt base. I have seen mentioned a good bit. Um, I've played around with it a little bit. You have to pay for them, which is kind of annoying because it seems like you're not really paying for much. But if you do find something that will work exactly for what you need to so like laser, line art maybe. There are a bunch of different versions. So maybe you like this style, uh, instead of trying to like reverse engineer how to create this yourself, um, you basically can pay for it. Uh, then you have that prompt as a template that you can generate. But also I will kind of use this and just take a screenshot and like reverse engineer it myself as well. And now a mid journey specific one is using style references. Um, so these could be actual images like we were just talking about. So I'm gonna do a dragon attacking a castle. Then I'm going to add an image, which I already have right here. And then um, there's these little icons right here. And so um, I actually wanna use this as a style reference um, instead of like the image prompt, or it's basically gonna like try to merge those things together. It's confusing. But I just wanna do the clipboard because I like take what this looks like, but create a dragon attacking a castle. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And then I'm also going to run this as well. But this time uh, I'm gonna do dash dash uh, SW 1000. And so that is the style weight. And so basically you can give it values from zero to a thousand, uh, where a thousand gets a lot more like the style that you put in. So in this case, it's gonna look a lot closer to this. Uh, but you can see um, just by using that image, we are getting something that's a lot closer to what we originally had in there. And so before where we had used that image to, to create the prompt like directly in chat GPT, and you can use that for pretty much like anything. Um, this is very mid journey specific and something that I wind up using a ton. Uh, and you can see now that I've driven this all the way up to a thousand, um, it's getting even more like high contrast between lights and darks uh, for our reference image, which I can't pull up, which is right here. Now, another thing you can do with Midjourney using style references is they're basically like little codes and you can actually look through libraries of codes where people have saved those. Um, so you can just like copy and paste them more or less. And one that I like to use is Midjourney SREF, uh, but you can probably find a bunch of these as well. Um, they have a pricing thing with it, uh, but they still give you the codes. It's more, I think of like a walkthrough of how to use it, but usually it's pretty easy. And what I like to do is let's get something that's like very popular. So we're gonna go Disney. Uh, so we're gonna use this guy right here. It looks fun. I'm gonna copy it, come back over to Mid Journey. Again, I'm gonna use that text. This time we're gonna use that code that I just got. And then I'm gonna do um, dash dash S style weight of a thousand because I wanna make it as close to whatever that style is um, just to see. And while that is generating, I mean, there are just like tons and tons of different ones that are out there. This one specifically, they have nearly a thousand. Actually, I'm gonna use this black and white one. So yeah, now we have these like really weird looking black and white images of a dragon attacking a castle. So those are some like quick mid journey tips that I like to use. Um, if you would like a full tutorial, how I use mid journey specifically going through the entire workflow to taking it to a laser, let me know down in the comments. All right, moving right along to our second set of AI tools. And really this is just like a second category of how to use them. And that is how to modify existing images. And we kind of were just talking about that with these stylized stuff inside of mid journey. Um, but let's say now we have an image that we want to use. So I'm going to 
go with, uh, yeah, this one looks the coolest, I think. Now I wanna bring this to my laser. So one thing you might run into is you really need to upscale your image. And since we are in mid journey, I'm gonna go ahead and do um, the upscale tool they have right here. That's one of the options uh, right there. There's also a bunch of resources online that will do the same thing. And you can definitely Google around and you might find some that are gonna be more like this. This is upscale.media. So I'm just gonna take the low resolution image uh, and gonna let it do its thing. Uh, a lot of times, if there is a free version of this tool, they're gonna be advertising the paid version um, or they're trying to advertise some like bigger service. This is another one I've also used, Let's Enhance.io. This one might give you 10 free, it might be less. And if this is something you really want to do a good bit, but you only don't wanna pay once, uh, Topaz Labs, uh, specifically their Photo AI 3, um, it's 200 bucks, so it's not cheap, but I have used demos of this. It is pretty incredible what it can do. And basically all of these are creating a brand new AI generated image, uh, but it's based off of the low res image that you already started with. So you might see some of the details are a little bit different, but it's kind of guessing what should. Now, a lot of times you're doing straight vectors with a laser, uh, meaning there's math that's determining like the edges and the shapes and everything. And so you don't need like a bitmap, JPEG, PNG, image, but what we can do is actually convert this to a vector. And a service I like to use is Vectorize AI, and this is a paid service. I think there is a, uh, yeah, there's a $10 a month plan, but uh, it's pretty easy. You can just bring in your image, and then once it goes through its process, if we zoom in, you can kind of see what's going on. So um, those lines are the edges of the vector, and so uh, you're seeing like the bitmap pixely image inside, that is what we had before, versus what it's turning it into, there's really clean line vectors. And then we can download it. Now, another use case is what do you do if you have an image, but you need it to be bigger, but not just like the image is scaled up, but it was like cropped too tight. You wish you could see whatever is on the outside. Maybe you want to completely fill your workpiece, so like a cutting board or a coaster. Now with AI, this process is normally called outpainting. And with like all of these AI image generation tools, a lot of them will have something for that. Uh, again, Midjourney has that, but I think you have to be on their year plan in order to do that, which I'm not. And so um, I do have Photoshop and this is where I use it a bunch. So I've opened up that picture of Harrison Ford and then I'm gonna make my canvas a lot bigger. Now we have a lot more to work with. And so uh, let's say I wanted to actually give him more at the bottom. What I can do is I can select and I'm gonna kind of do this fast because it's more just so you can see that this works and then hit generative fill at the bottom, um, which is how uh, Adobe brings in their AI elements. Uh, I'm not gonna give it a prompt. And you can see when I selected it, I actually gave it a little bit of um, the bottom of his chin and his neck, just so it'd have something to reference. And a lot of times you have to do this like back and forth to get it to work. Uh, but you can see there, it just generated an entire shirt uh, for Harrison Ford that he may or may not have been wearing that day. And then I can basically go through and do the same process. I'm just holding shift, selecting, generative fill. Sometimes you have to do this like one at a time and then let it do its magic. Uh, and then we will be good to go. So there we go, a real picture that exists uh, with a bunch of stuff that doesn't as much, but you could definitely use this to fill out whatever you need. And then since we're here with General Fill, let's say um, you actually wanted to add elements. This is more hit or miss for me. I wanna put like a clock and uh, maybe I just don't have it as dialed in and kind of knowing the process, but you definitely can add elements to images. A lot of these AI generators, uh, Photoshop is the one that I wind up using at this point. And there we go. It's gonna give us a few different versions, kind of works. It feels like it's tilted the wrong direction. Uh, so there's a lot more like playing around that you have to do to get it to work. But you get the idea, a lot of stuff you can do with image adjustments, especially expanding the canvas of what you're working with. Now, another tool I wanted to throw out is called Patterned AI. Again, this is web-based. Again, there's a monthly subscription. So um, use this if you want. But if you're wanting to generate patterns for whatever you're creating, um, or you have an image that you wanna convert into a seamless pattern, so like wallpaper, that kind of stuff, um, this is really, really cool. So I'm just going to try this. Uh, looks like I have a few free credits. Uh, so actually I have never used this before. I just learned about this while recording this video. Uh, we're going to see how well it works. Okay, so it looks like we're just gonna create an image, uh, but then once you click onto it, it brings us to the seamless checker. Oh, and then it turns it, turns it into a seamless image. 
Uh, that's actually really, really cool um, if you have a use case specifically for this. All right, let's see how well this one works. So this is Harrison Ford as Han Solo, spaceship from Star Wars, doesn't look exactly like it, but yeah, that's fun. And then one more kind of unique case. Uh, this is called makersmarket.xyz. And this basically puts a filter on top of an image, but it's great if you want to laser cut things out. Uh, so to show you what I mean, uh, convert images into laser ready patterns is going to be the easiest probably to understand. And so we are going to, again, choose our image of Harrison Ford. And then over here, you can see we have the set to engraving. So that's just gonna make it um, gray. Then it can do these like wild things, uh, which I don't totally understand or haven't gotten deep into. Uh, but these are the really cool ones over here. So um, this, and if I adjust the parameters, can increase the resolution. So these are different circles we could cut out from a piece of wood that would then generate that image as you step back. You might have seen some artwork like this before. And these cut tools especially are like free from the best that I can tell. To get export that as a vector. And now that it is inside Lightburn, if I switch this over to lines, I'm actually doing cuts. Those are all the cuts that we would do from this piece of wood. And then if you zoom out and it's darker underneath, uh, then you have Harrison Ford's face. Now, last but not least is when you run into issues with your machines and actually getting support to figure out what to do. So let's say X tool S1 40 watt that won't turn on. Any idea why? And Perplexity always has done a really good job of going out and finding sources. Uh, so not just like official sources, uh, but uh, you're gonna get videos as well. Uh, and also is gonna search through um, forums. So they'll, you'll see like the Lightburn forum and uh, like the X tool forum are popping up. And it's gonna give me a bunch of different things that I can check uh, to move on from there. So I use this as a much more like focused version of just like Googling. Now something that I've put together that I'm still playing around with, uh, and this is going to be Lightburn specific, but uh, with ChatGPT, you can basically set up your own custom uh, GPT where you can give it documentation that it can read from. And so I have created this, there's a link down below. Uh, it's just called Learn Lightburn, but inside of this is like the most up-to-date documentation for Lightburn. Um, so when I look for a question, Question, what's the best way to adjust uh, power settings? Uh, this is pretty general. It's gonna give you like a step-by-step -step process on what to do uh, to play around with. It can be a little bit hit or miss. I'm definitely dialing it in. And right now it wants you to confirm that each step works. So yeah, that worked. I'll look for the layers and windows panel, and then I'll go through and tell you what to do next. This I see being really, really helpful in the future as we can add in more documentation. So stuff like this, I totally can see as just the beginning, as people build more and more powerful tools, utilizing AI, especially for analysis and like troubleshooting uh, moving forward. Now, if you actually wanna take a look at all of the tools and resources that I use, I've got a link down below. Uh, these aren't just like the AI specific ones. These are everything from like where to find the right types of materials, uh, some of like the software tips and tricks that I use. And you can get it right down below. Now, if you want a more detailed tutorial on Mid Journey, especially and how to generate artwork for a laser, uh, let me know in the comments and I can definitely go through and make one. Uh, but for now, we're gonna jump into the full depth map process using fiber lasers like this. All right, until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.